That's amazing. Check these numbers that, that's out. That's it, right yeah. there. That is the difference that's in the difference. parring or bogeying this hole. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, let's get real for a second. I think one of the biggest questions that we hear very often mm -hmm. in the Facebook group, so I want to address it here, is some of our higher handicappers, some of our newer golfers, mm -hmm. they see, they saw the ball fitting, who, by the way, you're gonna see Michael in a second, a familiar face from our ball fitting. That's right. You're also gonna see Frederick, we're gonna meet up with him in a second, who you guys saw when plant. we went to the ball plant tour. So we got some familiar faces in here, but the question becomes, they see us playing, the, I play the Pro V1, you play the Pro V1X, mm -hmm. that's our ball fitting, but, Let's put the cards on the table. A lot of people say, well, I'm not good enough yet to right. play the Pro V1 or the Pro V1X. Or, you know, they, they just say, my game's not there yet. And a lot of people compare them to something like playing forged irons. Right. So we want to test that idea. And, and we know because, like a lot of you, we're, we consider ourselves mid handicappers, mm -hmm. right? 12 handicap. But we've seen improvement from it. But you know, don't take our word so far. Let, let's see how we can test this. Yeah, absolutely. So you're ready to fire up some robots? Let's fire these robots up. Let's go see <laughs> what we can learn. All right, guys, told you we're gonna introduce you to a familiar face. If you remember Frederick from our tour at the ball play, which is not far from here. Not far at all, about five miles. Yeah, right, right down the road here. Yeah. But what we wanna talk about today, and, and this is, I'm just seeing all this cool equipment, and I can't wait to dive into this, but I wanna get your take on this because we recently did our ball fitting. I was fit for the Pro V1, Mike was fit for the Pro V1X. Um, one question that does come up in, in the Facebook group, DMs, stuff like that, some of our newer golfers, guys who are newer to the game, yep. they're asking the question, all right, you know, it, it's, it's a premium golf ball, we all know it's a premium golf mm -hmm. ball, I feel like it's not right for me. Sometimes mm -hmm. they make the comparison to like having blades or mm -hmm. something like that. So I wanted to get your take and opinion on that. And the other thing too I see with a lot of newer golfers, the first thing they look for is distance. Mm -hmm. They want distance off the tee mm -hmm. and then I see them gearing towards those balls that advertise a little more distance mm -hmm. off the tee. So I want to get your feeling on both those types of things. Yeah, and like we hear that from golfers all the time is Pro V1's intimidating or I won't benefit from it. I'm not good enough to, to, to utilize it or take advantage of it. Um, and we can tell you unequivocally that's not true. You know, if we walked into a, to a, a golf store to buy a set of irons as a 15 or 20 handicap, the associate there wouldn't put us in MBs because oh. they're simple and low technology. They put us in AP1 or AP2 or AP3 because they're packed with technology mm -hmm. to make you play better. Pro v the same way. It is packed with technology to help everybody play better, not just the best players in the world. Certainly, they love Pro v1 and Pro v1x because they right. can take advantage of that technology, but everybody can too because Pro v1 and Pro v1x generate high speed and low spin off the tee, high spin on lower speed shots into the green. And today we'll show you the power of Pro V1 and Pro V1X off the tee, certainly as compared to a two-piece distance ball, mm -hmm. and then really the power of it uh, when you hit it into the green. And I like that you make that analogy because a lot of you saw our video we did with Kevin Sprecker where we did our club fitting. And what he had said was actually, I prefer when some of the higher handicappers come in because I can show them a more dramatic you know, increase in performance by using the technology, where some of your better players can almost hit anything and make it work. So I think we might see some similarities here with the ball. I think you're absolutely right. Okay, yeah. so how do we test this? How are we gonna go about this? So we'll do two things. We're gonna hit two shots. Uh, one of the premises that, that golfers come into to, to golf ball purchases with is that, hey, I'm not that good. I need something that's straight distance off the tee. Right. And I can tell you that golf ball doesn't exist. <laughs> right. um, Pro V1 is a straight distance ball off the tee. Um, but so we'll hit two shots. We'll hit Pro V1 with one of our robots. We'll show you some numbers. How far did it fly? What did it spin like? What was the ball speed like? And then we'll hit, it's kind of our scout team ball. It okay. represents the two-piece distance market, the straight distance market. Um, two-piece construction, very low spin, uh, very high flying. Um, and we'll use that, we'll look, we'll look at the differences between those two uh, with the robot. Right. Um, and then we'll go out on the golf course and I look at the I see you've got the track and look yep. all set yep. up. So we'll that's what we're numbers. gonna do to get the numbers and, and 
take all subjectiveness out of this. Exactly. We're gonna look right at it. Exactly. Okay, let's Great. do it. I'm excited to see you crank yeah. that thing up. Yeah. Yeah, so Sarge just hit a Pro V1 with, with our robot, and it's set up on a condition that, that mimics what we might see for a golfer who hits the ball with about 150 ball speed. Um, you know, certainly below tour average, um, but pretty representative of, of the average golfer in the market. And what we saw was 152 mile per hour ball speed, launch angle of 12.5 degrees, carried 253 for a total of about 275, with about 2,700 uh, RPMs to spin. These are great numbers if you want to hit a long, straight shot off the tee. Yeah. When we switch that out and we put two-piece distance in, the expectation would be distance would go up, right. spin would go down, who knows on launch exactly, but let's see if that's the case. Okay, let's see it. Sarge. All right, I see the numbers starting to come in. Yeah, so you'll recall again, this is about 150 ball speed player, and we saw this about 150 ball speed speed actually went down uh, about a mile per hour. What happened to spin? Spin went down about 200 RPMs. For the average golfer, Negligible, right? they're not consistent yeah. enough to, to even be within 200 RPMs of their average uh, shot after shot. Carry actually went down about a yard and a half. Um, total was about a yard longer. So those numbers are not advantageous versus Pro V1. They're almost identical. Um, but this is a golf ball that promises straight distance. Pro V1 promises straight distance too because of how it's constructed. The big difference between these golf balls is when we go out on the golf course and hit them into the green. So eye-opening for me. How about you, Mike? One yeah. yard. One yard difference. One yard difference. Incredible. And it's got the, that, that word on the box that makes us pick it up. Distance, right? Mm -hmm. There you see that. There's your proof right there. Yeah. I know. It's incredible. All right. We're going to take a little ride out here. So, Do we have enough golf balls? When the facility is so big, you need a cart you to get around. <laughs> hey, it's pretty good. All right. You got your wedges? <laughs> got them. Right. All right. We brought our wedges out here, and here's where we're going to start to get that feel portion. So we had the robot hit it. You know we are not robots. <laughs> we make mistakes. We do things, you know, different each time. Um, obviously we try for as much consistency as possible, but here's where feel is going to come in. We're going to try hitting both balls. We'll have Frederick take us through this in a minute, but uh, I'm excited to hit some, some balls in this green and see what it feels like. That green looks gorgeous. Doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Definitely worse testing environments than that. Yeah, big time. Yeah. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Hey. Oh, we're doing this the old way. He's pacing off the yardage? He's pacing off the yardage, but we're going to make Guess. a little game out of it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say it's 64 yards. What do you think? Uh, I'm going to guess that it's, I'm going to put him right on the 70 number. One dollar, Bob. One dollar, Bob. Let's see. Leave it to like the guys with that engineering brain to, yeah, 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 to yeah, double yeah. check double the numbers. Check. You gotta double check it. <laughs> it was probably 64 going out, 63 and a half coming back. Wind is slight, 8 Sli degree. Oh, wow. The wind is Adam <laughs> coming that back. Yeah, yeah, right. That might affect his pace. Let's see. So what do we got, Frederick? What's the number? 73. Oh, I was you closer. Yeah. You were under and closer. Yeah. All right. You could drive home. So here we're going to bring to life the difference between Pro V1 or Pro V1X in, in, in this case, and a two-piece distance ball. You know, back when we were hitting drivers with the robot, we saw about 200 RPM different of spin, which is not meaningful uh, in any way in terms of dispersion or anything like that, and certainly not within a golfer's ability to, to hit repeatably. Here, we're gonna see a dramatic difference in spin, uh, where a two-piece distance ball will spin a lot less. It's designed to spin less. Yeah. Um, versus Pro V1X, uh, in this case, which is going to spin a lot more. Um, and it's that <clears throat> technology in Pro V1 that allows it to generate high spin on low speed shots. We're only 73 yards from the pin here. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to help all golfers play better, uh, regardless of skill level. And for our newest golfers, just really high level explanation of why that matters more spin in this, in this particular shot. Yeah, I mean, in this shot, this is a shot that's about generating control and stopping power. And the way we do that is through spin. Now, if you have exceptional technique and you can generate a lot of spin or you know exactly how you can land the ball, you can play a two-piece distance ball. 
we describe players like that as PJ Tour players. Right. And even right. they don't choose that. Right. Um, if your technique isn't perfect. Because why work harder than you need to? Exactly. Yeah. If, if your technique isn't perfect, um, Pro V1 and Pro V1 X are going to help you generate a lot more spin than a lower technology, you know, ball that's really just marketed towards distance off the tee. All right, Mike, you ready to do this? Yeah, what do you got in your hands? 60 degree. 60. 60, yeah, whatever your 73 yard shot is, we've got a front pin here. Um, and, you know, the, the thing about this shot is you've got options, right? You can hit it long and bring it back, you can fly it to the hole. Options. You know, though, that you're going to be able to generate a bunch of spin with this ball right. to at least be on the green, right? Mm -hmm. So, regardless of your skill level and what you're trying to accomplish, you're going to have options with Pro V1. So, let's see what you can do. On that one, carried 75 yards, launched to 29 degrees. You guys remember it during, at the fitting, we talked about kind of that low penetrating flight with wedges. Yep. Best way to control your distance with a lot of spin. 9,700 RPMs of spin there on that 75 yard wedge shot. Sweet. Really good, right? right? So you're really in a great place with Pro V1X in terms of the spin you generate on a shot like this. You know, 9,700, <laughs> it's hard to go much higher than that right. on, on a shot this close to the green. So you're generating a lot of stopping power. Cool. Let's put two-piece distance in your hand and see what changes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and let's be real. This is not something we'd be too unused to. It's not that many seasons ago that we may have been playing a two-piece ball right. like this, mm -hmm. right? So let's see how it performs. So you notice right away, come back at all it now. flies higher. Yeah. And and distance balls tend to be designed to fly higher because that's the way you get them to stop. They're low spin everywhere. So if we want to generate stopping power, flies higher. Second thing you notice right away is that one didn't spin didn't back. Spin, right. The Pro V1X you hit just a minute ago came back. And so just to the naked eye, before we even talk about TrackMan, we know that's going to be a lower spin golf ball. How much lower spin was it, Mike? Yeah, so let's talk about those two things, right? Launch, we all know it's right off the club face, it launched higher. That launched at 36 degrees, so seven degree increase in terms of launch. Spin, you went from 9,700 down to 4,600, right? 50% <laughs> reduction, right. or more than a 50% right, right, reduction. Right. So huge difference there that's in terms of spin. Wow. And then there's environmental factors too, I would think. So if, if you had a ball that's gonna rely on height in order to stop, you get a windy day, you're in trouble. You're exactly right. So if we were gonna throw a baseball at that flag, and we wanted to throw it accurately, we wouldn't try to throw it as high as we could because a lot of things happen when the ball's in the air. Right. We'd throw a baseball on, a, on as hard a line as we could. We want to do the same thing with our wedge shots. Something that flies low and spins a lot is the best way to control a wedge. So the more you throw it up in the air, the longer the chance it has for something bad to happen to it, wind, whatever, and it's just tougher to hit a really precise shot that way. Incredible. So you gave out half, half the yeah. spin yeah. when going to that two-piece distance ball. Wow. Imagine a golfer that's even less skilled. Yeah. Who doesn't even generate 9,700 right. spin with Pro V1X. They can't afford that. They might not yeah. keep that ball on the green. <laughs> that's the number. All right, that's man. Right that's number. it. That's the one. <laughs> Frank, you yep. launch it a little bit higher, right? Launch yep. it at 40, 40 degrees, but still, a lot of spin you're able to generate there. 6,700 RPMs of spin with Pro V1. So the second one didn't pick up the spin, but I think we noticed things, you know, again, we're, allowed, we're golfers, we're on the golf course, we're allowed to use our eyes, right? Right. We saw that one launch higher. Yep. You could tell it was lower spinning, ended up carrying further, not, not as good a distance control. So overall, you know, you've lost control on that shot by playing that type of a golf ball. Another interesting thing we can run into is when golfers play a variety of golf balls out of their bag. Yeah. You know, on one hole they play Pro V1, and the next hole they play two-piece distance ball. Is getting accurate and consistent numbers around here from a distance standpoint can be difficult because when you take 5,000 RPMs of spin out of a shot, yeah. it's going to affect how far it flies. And I think we just saw that with you. You made two very consistent swings, but that two-piece distance ball went 20 yards past the pin. Yeah. Probably because it was so much lower spin than Pro V1, which is what you play and, and you're, you're dialed into. Right. So just basic distance control, if you don't play the same ball every time, becomes yeah. challenging as well. And we are literally looking at a difference of an, getting it up and down and not. Absolutely. Because I would tell you, almost 0% chance I make that second pot. Yep. It looks like from here it's probably 30, 30 feet. 
Yep. The other one is probably a five footer. Exactly. So there's your score. Like, so if I had just played that one because I found it in the woods on the private pre previous hole, I wouldn't have a bearing for how far it's gonna. Exactly. That's amazing. Check these numbers that, That's out. it right yeah. there. That is the difference that's in the difference. parring or bogeying this hole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or birdie if we're on a birdie, five, right. right? You know, right. Yeah. or your big hitter. It's yeah, cool. right. Wow. And you know, you talk about the impact on this one shot. How many times is this going to come up and around, right? Maybe you save a shot or two on this one hole. Yeah. This comes up four or five times over the course of a round. Mm. Four or that's, five shots right there. That's a huge difference in your score. No at doubt the end about of the day, it. So. And we're hitting from a perfectly manicured fairway here. Right, right. If we went in the rough, you'd see even, an even more dramatic difference because you're just not going to get the spin out of that two-piece distance ball like you will pro one. All right, well, I'm sold. I just <laughs> want to walk up there and tap that putt in. Yeah, right. <laughs> pro V1 tap putt, and the other ones you can forget. You can have them. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Thank you.